pals. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It is the one with Paige the Framer. I am Paige Miller, your host, and I thank you for making your way to my little corner of YouTube. Uh, if you don't know who I am and you would like to find out more, you can follow me on all of the social medias. I can be found as Paige the Framer. I will link below to all of those places. So let me just, before we get into the knitting and the content and all of that stuff. I just want to fill you guys in on a few things that will be happening in the near future here at my YouTube channel and at my picture framing and yarn shop, which is Frame and Fiber in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Uh, so the first thing is if you are local or if you plan on being in my area anytime soon, <laughs> uh, I host a weekly knit night on Tuesday evenings from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. and I would love for you to join us. Uh, it's a really nice time. We just bring a project and yourself, a friend, maybe a beverage, sure, and we just sit around and chat and all things yarn, all things fiber, tons of crafty talk. <laughs> so if you like that kind of stuff and you would like to be with your people, stop in on Tuesday nights at the Frame Shop. And next, I want to fill you in on the charity hat drive that I will be hosting now and through the end of October. Uh, October is RSV Awareness Month. RSV is respiratory syncytial virus, which affects uh, preemies, newborns, babies, and young children. In preemies, very preemie babies, it can be life-threatening. We're specifically gearing this towards uh, newborns, or I'm sorry, preemies. So the organization that we're working with is called Little Lungs, and you can find that on the web at littlelungs.com. And they host something during the month of October that is called Knit Big for Little Lungs. So this Friday coming up, uh, me and a bunch of knitters will be, ma be making up kits for the hats. So if you are interested in helping us make preemie hats, um, for me they take me about 45 minutes to make so it's a perfect, you know, waiting around or sometimes when I'm in church I make them. <laughs> so yeah, um, join us. Let me know if you will direct message me on either Instagram or you can leave a call, don't leave a comment below because I need your name and your mailing address so I can send you a kit. International is definitely welcome. The only thing is you have to get the kits back or the, the hats back to me by November 15th. So you do have to mail them back to me. That is um, your, not only your time for making the hats, but also the shipping back to me. So if that is okay with you, please uh, direct message me on Instagram. Uh, and there will be a lot more to talk about uh, <clears throat> for the knitting big for little lungs uh, in the next few podcasts or uh, next few videos because I will be talking about this a lot. <laughs> so stay tuned on social media as well. And then of course in October, oh wait, we are in October, <laughs> in less than three weeks we will be well, we've already been inundated with talk of Rhinebeck for the past six months, right? But Rhinebeck is happening in three weeks, and I am going. Uh, I will be there October 19th through the 21st. Uh, the 19th is Needles Up, which is a an event run by Leg Legacy Fiber Arts, uh, run by Sue and Chelsea. And it is an evening, or actually an afternoon, of vending, and they curate their show and... I call it a show. They curate the event uh, with so many amazing vendors. If you check LegacyFiberArts.com, there's a link there for Needles Up. Uh, but it's going to be great. I'm excited to go. Uh, I'm helping out the Legacy Girls and they are so graciously giving me some space in their booth to sell my knitting mats. So if you'll be in Rhinebeck, you'll be able to come and see my knitting mats and yeah, they'll be there. So will I. And I hope to see you. <laughs> and so right after Rhinebeck, that weekend, Paul Miller will be driving up with, um, I'm staying in a house with a bunch of friends. And one of the women, Joan, her husband Rich, is going to be driving up with Paul Miller on the Sunday of Rhinebeck. So Paul Miller will be at Rhinebeck on Sunday if anyone wants to check him out. Check him out. Maybe just meet him. <laughs> 
don't check them out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they're driving up and he and I are going up to the Adirondacks for a much needed time off um, These past couple of months at the shop and in the knitting world have been very busy. I've had a lot going on and then Right after Halloween my next busy season November and December start up at the shop So we take about a week off somewhere in between there and this is our week and we're just gonna go and relax <laughs> so a much needed vacation and I'm sure I'll have some footage of that so the last thing I want to address with you guys is Virtual knit nights with Paige the framer. Have you noticed they haven't happened? I don't know why I am so bad with the virtual knit nights there's the IVKN which is the first knit night virtual knit night that I've ever attended and I absolutely love it and I can never make time for that one either and they do it three times a week you would think I could fit that in um, yeah so I have been so busy and not too busy to do the virtual knit nights but so busy that I haven't been thinking about them they haven't made it onto the schedule. So guys, I apologize if you miss knitting with each other. It's been such a great time. You know, the few times that we've done it, uh, it was wonderful. So I would like to throw this out there. If you guys love virtual knit night with me once a month, um, I would ask that if anyone is interested to kind of sort of be like a moderator with me or a host, um, if I can't be there, maybe one of you could. So if you're interested in getting more information about helping me host virtual knit nights, I would love for you to contact me. Send me a direct message on Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook even. Instagram and Ravelry. Yeah. I do want to start them up again. They won't start up until after I'm back, after I get back from vacation anyway, so we have some time to talk about it. But think about it. Contact me if you're interested. Okay, pals, so I think you're probably ready for me to announce the winners of the FF Finish Along that finished up on September 21st. That was a couple weeks ago. It finished up, of course, I didn't time things properly. It finished up the day that I was leaving for the Knitting Pipeline Retreat, so I didn't, I didn't pull any names in, and I guess it didn't really matter because I'm podcasting now and that's when I said I was going to announce it anyway so we're all good so thank you all for participating there is a bunch of participants on Ravelry and on Instagram and if you would like to see what we all made you can check out the hashtag FF finish along on Instagram or you can check the friends of frame and fiber message boards or no yeah discussion boards on Ravelry. Uh, there we have the finish along tagged and you can see all the pictures of all the finished products. They were beautiful. So the winners, let's see. So I picked three winners. The first winner I picked from Ravelry and that winner, oh gosh, as I drop everything, <laughs> is, let's see, who is that? It is, it was post number 68 on, in the thread, Vicky, who is V Shaw, and she made the lambing mitts by Veronica Job. I think it's Job or Jobby or Joby or Hobie, however you pronounce it. <laughs> Here's a picture of her finished mitts. Uh, so she wins. What's the first prize? This one. The first prize is this beautiful skein. Oops. of Mitchell Creations hand dyed yarns. This is my friend Tara. She is, I don't want to mess this up, is she from Mississippi? Uh oh, Tara, I forget. She's from down south, y'all. And she is an incredible dyer. Do you see these colors? And then with that, I am giving you, now these are like my sock needles of choice. I don't know if they're yours, so if you do not like them, you can pass them on. But they are the Addy Turbo Rockets. Uh, this is on, these are a 2.25 millimeter needle. 
Uh, and I'm giving you two 24 inches. And the reason why I'm giving you two is because I'm just, this to me in my head was, oh, it's a sock prize. So I'm going to give you yarn to make a sock and needles to make the sock. I like to do my socks concurrently, two at a time. I do also use Magic Loop, but this is less fiddly, so I figured, what the heck, it's a good prize, and I love doing it, and I have a ton of 2.25 millimeter needles. <laughs> so I hope they work for you. Um, like I said, if these are too small, I'll pass them on, but yeah, I hope you like your prize, Vicki. Okay, and then the next prize, where am I going to put this? Oh, I'll put it back here. Okay. The next prize was drawn from Instagram, uh, from the hashtag, the FF finish along tag, and it was post number 33, who is Tina, um, and she, her Instagram handle is textile T, and she made the piece of my heart socks. I don't remember who the pattern writer is for those socks, but those are the socks that she made, so go check them out. Oh, no, wait, I'll put them right here. Uh, they're beautiful. So she won, what did she win? Oh, Tina, you won. Here is a handmade button from Natalie at Remembrance Pottery, which I think you can see at the bottom there. And along with that is a jar, no, a bottle of soak um, wool wash for you to finish all of your projects with <laughs> to soak and block uh, yeah so this is from Natalie I switched out the color originally I had originally this was the button that I was going to gift to you but I stole it back because it matches my sweater so perfectly that I finished that I need this so <laughs> this is the blue you're getting <laughs> so this uh, and a bottle of the soak um, everyone when when you you know contact me with your mailing addresses and let me know let me know your mailing addresses so I can get your prizes out to you and Tina if you're familiar with soak and there's a specific scent that you like let me know and I can pick that for you otherwise I'm just gonna pick a random one okay so then the third prize I picked from combining Ravelry and Instagram the the all of the posts and the winner came from Ravelry she was post number 44 in the thread it is Jan known as witty moniker on Ravelry and her finished object was a spike sweater by Caitlin Hunter it's beautiful incredible so her prize is a knitting mat So Jan, Tina, and Vicki, get in touch with me with your addresses, and I will ship these off to you. Everybody, thanks so much for joining. It was really, uh, I think it was really fun. I do want to do some more uh, knit-alongs, uh, make-alongs, but I, at this point, I'm not going to start one until after the holidays, just because of all the stuff happening, and there's so many uh, knit-alongs happening right now that let's just draw that, join them. <laughs> All right, moving on. Okay, so finally I'm going to be talking about my knitting my knitting pipeline retreat. The rest of the podcast is knitting. Uh, all of the knitting that I did on the on the retreat, uh, knitting that I did with friends on the retreat, the things that they made. Uh, and then also a lot of the, oh sorry, I'm looking at my notes. Uh, a lot of the things we just did at the retreat. So I will have thrown in here besides showing you my finished objects and my whips I will also have video throughout the rest of this so you can see the things that we were up to so the first thing that I want to talk to you about is hold on I'll be right back I finished it isn't it great you really can't see it can you it's just the top so I do need to Reblock this because with the steak that I did, um, it's a little bit wonky, uh, the front here, so it does need to be steaked, which I will do, and I do need to put my button on. Again, it's this beautiful button made by Natalie of Remembrance Pottery, and that's gonna go 
right here at the top because this little button matches that little circle look at the color it's pretty it's pretty close man so it works so let me stand up and give you a bit of a show I'm gonna move the camera back a little so here I am like I said it does need a block I could use a block back here but it's so much better so um, it's definitely big enough I could put buttons on it and button it closed here and maybe, I don't know, maybe I could take this eye cord off and do that, but um, it fits great. It is nice and big. It's a little bit oversized. Now that I've steaked it, it's funny, now that I've steaked it, it feels big. When I put it on when it was a pullover, it did not feel big. It felt like it fit perfect. But this A-line opening that it does is what makes me feel comfortable. Why? I don't know. It's just what I love. So let me put you back over here so I can sit down. Yes, I'm in love with my sweater. So the modifications, or you know what, before I talk about this, let me insert the video here. <laughs> Yeah, I've got it. Many things that they, they haven't had anything for Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you know, to make it easy, it's Oh, perfect. bigger scissors for this. Right back, right. No, I think I might, I might. <laughs> I'm so excited. up in the middle is that it might stretch this um, ditch a oh, little too oh, much. Oh, are you saying she should go through like these two beds? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that yeah makes sense. I agree. Don't you? Yes. Don't you think? Yes. Come through these two yes. together yes. to make it stronger. I agree. I agree. And there won't be any distortion. I was thinking of picking up the leg between them, but you're like, you could just oh, think, No, no, yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. Are my gurus agreeing? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love how my gurus come together. I was excited, wasn't I, <laughs> to get this finished? Uh, did you see my friends helping me? Barbara and Beth and Lisa, who you did not see in the video, but um, yeah, Barbara and Barbara and Beth really were my cheerleaders and my coaches during this thing. So uh, they're both very experienced knitters and, I mean, amazingly beautiful knitters. And so having them help me just gave me the confidence. And it was so much fun to steek. Do not be afraid of the steek. For, for one thing, don't be afraid of it because if it does, if it does kind of turn out Blech, you can just make something else. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. But, um, so, okay, let's talk about what I did. Okay, so it is a yoked sweater. This is the Ready for Fall by Isabel Kramer. And I, let's see. 
So I made the sweater. It I got gauge. It fits the way the pattern calls for. Um, but I think because of the way my I, my body's shaped and my style and personality, I don't like the way a pullover sweater fits. This is a DK weight yarn. It is Green Mountain Spinnery. So maybe if I made a fingering weight pullover sweater, I would like that better because it'll drape different. But I just feel really boxy and not a flattering way in a pullover sweater. So that's when I was like, I'm going to seek this. <laughs> and I went to the retreat and Beth walked me through the crocheting up the edge. Uh, in hindsight, we both realized I crocheted too close to the center. I did three stitches out. I probably should have done five or seven. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, and then you'll see, so is there anything else I need to say about that? Oh, I, of course I modified the color. This was supposed to be um, straight through. There was not supposed to be this band of gold. And then the, although actually there wasn't supposed to be any color work on the sleeve either. <laughs> <laughs> the color work on the sleeve it was just to be at the bottom and it was only supposed to be no gold it was just supposed to be four rows of circles that were all the same color so I changed it up only because I had the yarn in my stash and I wanted to use it that's the only reason why I changed that uh, so when I steaked it instead of doing a button band which I don't know I just didn't do a button band why I don't know, maybe. I don't really know why. I just didn't. <laughs> I, I don't generally button cardigans, and if I do button a cardigan, it's usually just this top button or two buttons right here. And I don't need to button this one. So I did an I cord edging. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So there's my I cord. Isn't it pretty? And then on the inside, there is the the edge. Like I said, we I steaked it too close to where um, I, or I crocheted too close to the steak. So I think I was originally going to do a ribbon on the inside, but I think I'm just going to whip stitch this so that this just lays nice and flat. But I like the way that looks because it kind of mimics the I cord. So it's just a really pretty finish. So I guess I'm technically not finished because I still have to put my button on and reblock it and <laughs> oh well stitch this down um yeah and i think that this using the gold up the up the edge really just ties in the the color work that i chose i kind of wish that i could have i corded i corded I, mean, I guess I could. I could put an eye cord around the edge. No, it's fine the way it is. Don't listen to me. I like it the way it is. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should. No, no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I had toyed around with doing a zipper, but no zipper. Just a button. A Natalie button. I'm in love with this thing. I'm very happy. And yes, if the weather cooperates, you will be seeing this at Rhinebeck. <laughs> Yay! Okay. Well, let me take this off. So the next finished object, where am I? Here I am. Modifications and steak. Is there anything else I need to tell you about that? No, right? We're good. No, moving on. Right? Oh, do you know what I do want to tell you guys before? So this is, this is the lovely thing about being with the knitters at retreats. You meet people who come from all different walks in li of lives and experiences, and the knitting brings us all together. So, I, which you guys have known, because I've talked about this on the podcast several times now, but you, can you see it? Wait, let me put my hand and flatten it. So, I definitely have a huge, huge difference in my knitting gauge and my purling gauge. And like I said, I've talked about this tons. You know what, you can see it better on the purl side. Um, I've talked about it tons. See that striping right there or that? That is because my purls are looser than my knits. 
Um, and that is happening in this sweater, even though I knit it in the round, because there was short row shaping in the back and short row shaping in the arms, which this is hard. This part right here does drive me nuts. And it's the only part of my sweater that I don't like, but whatever. Um, so I got some advice <laughs> from some of the girls at the knitting retreat and I will be swatching with the techniques that they have told me about. Uh, the first one is I will be knitting. So I knit continentally. I pick. So I will be knitting. I'll be knitting continental and I'm going to try to purl by throwing. We'll see how that goes. I've never thrown so I'm not sure how that'll work, but I'm going to try that. I'll do a swatch for that. And then I'm also going to do a swatch where I, when I, on the purl row, instead of wrapping the yarn over like I normally do, I'm going to wrap it under and over, under and around. So it'll essentially twist the stitch, which means when I knit, I have to knit into the back loop. So we'll see. I'm going to see, I'm going to do a swatch and I will check in. But that's so great. That's why we all need to go to knitting retreats and be with our people. Because they speak our language. Muggles do not speak our language. Okay, so that was FO number one. Oh, my nose is itchy. So my next finished object are my finally finished Avenues socks by Nina Philip. Mina. I'm going to say Nina. Mina Philip. Um, these are such a fun knit. So I knit the pattern, basically the pattern is all, all I followed, um, the patterning I should say of her pattern, the rest of it I didn't. I get so lazy with my sock knitting that I continually do afterthought heels. They fit me fine, so I'm okay with that, but I really want to experiment some more with other socks, but I've been a bum, not a bum. I've been a sock bum. I have. I've been a sock bum. I started a sock from the toe up, uh, and I generally just don't feel like paying attention to when the heel goes in, so I just keep knitting, <laughs> and then I have to cut in the heels. These socks were done ages ago, and so I was waiting for ages to cut in the heels, and I did that at the knitting retreat. Which is fun because a couple people there hadn't seen it done, so I got to share that with them. How cute is this sock? So this yarn, you're probably wondering, because it's amazing. See how it microstripes? Well, when you microstripe, when you use a microstriped yarn with this, it's a slip stitch pattern, it really creates these really cool V's that you can really see. How fun is that? Oh, I love it. Uh, love, love, love these socks. They fit my feet perfectly. Um, they're not a fingering weight. I think it's a sport weight or it's like a light sport somewhere in between. So this yarn is dyed by Mars and her daughter Adachi who own Dynamics Yarn. They made this a while ago. I've had this skein. I think I've had this skein for about a year. So it was good to use it. Um, like I said, it's such a fun, I'm so glad I paired this yarn with this pattern. So there we are. We've got a finished pair of socks. Yay. Okay. I wanted to share with you really quick, uh, the projects that I am actually working on now. So let me put my socks back here and put my sweater. Uh, where are my project bags? Oh, they're right here. Okay, so the first one that I've been working on is a crochet project. I've made this once before and I was obsessively crocheting on it and loving it. And the second time around, it's exactly the same. I just want to crochet the crap out of it and I don't want to do anything else. But I have to force myself to do other things because there's too much to do. <laughs> So I am making the farm girl shawl and this is using 
what am I using? So I'm using three, well, two full skeins and one mini skein. I'm using fingering weight yarn. The pattern calls for a DK or worst weight yarn. So I am holding them doubled, but because I'm holding them doubled, I'm able to marl the colors together, which is pretty darn cool. So the mini that I used, which you can see where I start marling them together, that's the mini here and down. And then I just finished using, or I'm, huh, I'm almost at the end of the mini. Where is the end? Here it is. I'm almost at the end. So um, then I'll add my, then I'll just knit straight with the, with this color. So the mini, I can't remember where I got it from. But it is a really cool gray and taupey red uh, speckly variegated yarn. This is more variegated than speckled. And then I am mixing that with this yarn, which is a hedgehog fiber, hedgehog fibers fingering or sock yarn, and it is the colorway Film Noir. And then my third color, which I haven't gotten to yet, which will marl with that is also a Hedgehog Fibers, and this one is called I forget. I'll put it somewhere down here. <laughs> anyway, the Farm Girl Shawl. It's a fabulously fun crochet project um, pattern written by Liz Alvino. You can find that on Ravelry if you just search Farm Girl Shawl. It's in my project bag that Seashore Sharon made for me the first time I went to the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. Yes, Maine Lobsters, guys. Lobsters. <laughs> Love this bag. This is my September bag for sure. Alright, so the next project that I am working on. Is that all I had to say about that? Yes. That's all you need to know. Okay, so this is a hoe. <laughs> it sounds so silly to say that. Uh, again, a sock, and it is an afterthought heel, of course. I cut this in. So this sock is finished. I did cut this in at the retreat. I definitely need different blockers. I do not like these blockers. Um, and it's hard to see because I'm making a... <laughs> how do you... I don't know how to make that... Yeah, this foot is too sh too small for my foot. I need something bigger. But anyway, uh, so this is a knee sock, and it comes up right to my knee. And I, let's see, what did I do? So this is using Cridium Handmade SS from Canada. This is her beautiful yarn. Um, this is in the colorway Clover. This was supposed to be my springtime sock. <laughs> I didn't finish it. I didn't finish it at all. But I finished it at the retreat and I'm really happy with it. So I cast on, or I did a 64 inch foot. And then I think, let's see, this is where I started my increases for my calf. So I got to, yeah, I'd say about there is where I would have made my ribbing to be finished with the I keep looking at myself look at, look at you <laughs> um, so I increased um, over I think it was every four stitches I wrote it down and I should have brought my notes and I didn't um, but I did mark it so I would know where to start the next one uh, and I increased it to 78 stitches for my calf and it fits great so I'm really excited um, I wanted to do a sock, a long sock, not so much because I'm like, ooh, I wear so many long socks, but because, especially with self-striping yarn, I don't want any yarn left over. I want to use every bit, so I guess I could have made, I could have taken, I could have made shorties and used scrap, and maybe I'll do that with the next pair, but, so that's that sock, and I am that far into the next one. So I do have a bit of a bit of knitting on this to go, but I think this one's going to live in my car. So I always will have it wherever I go. That sock, my Critium handmade sock is living in my main bag that Seashore Sharon made for me this year. Yes, I'm spoiled. Sharon is the best roommate. 
I am unworthy. <laughs> but I get prizes anyway. How cute is this bag? It's a tea towel that she bought at one of the um, gift stores last year. So, cute, right? Okay. So, I just finished, although I still have to do a thumb, one mitten. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the Flora Mitten by Miss Ellie, who is Skein Deer Knits. You guys all know her by now, I'm sure, because she's everywhere. She's the Mitten Lady. Uh, this was a fun knit. It took me forever because I kept not picking it up. It's really dumb because I love colorwork mittens, and I don't know why... I put this down but absolutely had such a ball knitting this one uh, I can't wait to cast on the other one which I think I will do tonight at knit night yes I am using this is the floor mitten if I didn't say it by scanned your knits and I'm using a cascade 220 uh, I do sell it in my shop so that's why I am making it with the cascade 220 for a sample for the shop although I think I have plenty by now <laughs> I have so many mittens. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing this. I'm going to cast on the new one, or the new one, the next one, and finish those thumbs. I haven't tried an afterthought thumb yet, the way, or, you know, cutting it in. Cut in thumb? Hmm. Anyway. So those are my whips. Yeah, so that those are the things that I worked on at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. Those are the whips that I'll be working on going forward. I do need to look on Ravelry and search for my next sweater. Um, I'm not sure what I feel like doing because I don't know what yarn I want to use, so I need to decide on that first. But I'll keep you posted. Yay! Until next time. Bye!